whoever gets both Triforces will rule this land forever. You must help me, Link. Over the years, we have witnessed several iterations of Princess Zelda across television shows and video games, and the 1989 Legend of Zelda series seems to be her best appearance so far. This series highlights Zelda's role as a fighter and shows her in a badass form as this princess steps up to fight against evil forces on her own instead of being a typical damsel in distress. Produced by DIC Entertainment, this show aired on television from September to December 1989 with a total of 13 episodes, and today, we shall go back in time and explore her legendary adventures. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I get out of here, Zelda and Link. You Embarking on an animated adventure, The Legend of Zelda series. The Legend of Zelda aired on television on Fridays and followed Zelda as she dealt with enemy forces that typically appeared in the form of Ganon and his minions. The main plot focuses on a golden relic known as the Triforce of Wisdom that embodies the essence of the Goddess of Wisdom, who had decided to bestow this artifact upon Princess Zelda. As the show starts, we learn that Zelda has been striving her best to keep the Triforce of Wisdom safe and far away from Ganon, an evil wizard who wields the Triforce of Power. However, Ganon proves to be a force to be reckoned with, and he has an army and a couple of tricks up his sleeve to get his grubby hands on the Triforce of Wisdom. The Legend of Zelda was one of the many shows that ran as a part of a Nintendo-themed TV block, and it was only aired once a week, whereas shows such as Super Mario Bros. aired from Monday to Thursday. Sadly, the show went off air after just 13 episodes episodes, and it is quite a shame that it did not get the followers it deserved, despite being such a fantastic package of action, comedy, and drama. The show's writer, Bob Forward, stated that the show was supposed to be an addendum to the Super Mario show, and the director, Josh Grust, added that The Legend of Zelda was only produced to promote a new Nintendo game, Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. While the show was created for commercial purposes, it managed to win many hearts over the years, and writers Phil Hahn and Eve Forward also mentioned that this project gave them an opportunity to fool around with this fun little show. Triforces will rule this land forever! You must help me, Link! Hey, for you, Zelda, anything! Journey Through Hyrule, A Guide to the Legend of Zelda The Legend of Zelda kicked off with an episode titled The Ringer on September 8, 1989, and wasted no time to set the premise. It began with Zelda calling out to Link and telling him about the Triforce of Wisdom while also cautioning him about the evil wizard Ganon, who supposedly had the Triforce of Power. As the intro plays out, we see shots of Zelda working alongside Link to prevent Ganon from getting his hands on the Triforce of Wisdom. As this would give him the authority to rule over the lands for ages to come. The 13-episode long story arc focuses on Zelda's adventures with Link as the two come together to maximize their resources to defeat Ganon. The intro ends. The episode starts with Link complaining about boredom while he spots Zelda from his balcony and admires her from afar. Link seems to harbor quite an intense crush on her, but his daydreams are shattered when a bunch of moblins attack him and attempt to steal a piece of the Triforce of Wisdom from his room. While it doesn't have to be said, these moblins were sent by Ganon, who was relentless in his pursuit of the Triforce of Wisdom. Link fights these intruders and makes his way to Zelda, who rejects his advances and orders him to stay in his room and look after the Triforce. In the meantime, Zelda heads over to judge the magician's contest while Ganon comes up with an elaborate plot to enter the competition. The contest was only an excuse for Ganon to enter the North Castle, and an unsuspecting Zelda let him in after he showed off a couple of magic tricks. Now that Ganon had made his way to the lion's den, he sent his forces to locate the Triforce, while he disrupted the contest by turning one of the participants' lizard into a fire-breathing dragon. As the crowd began panicking, Zelda was at a loss for how to deal with the situation, and Link rushed to by her side and fired a bunch of sword beams at the dragon to subdue him. As they dealt with this threat, 
Ganon used this distraction to steal the Triforce of Wisdom and return to the underworld through a secret entrance. However, Zelda saw right through Ganon's scheme and got one of the magicians to use their spell to grow a giant tree. In no time, Zelda swung by the tree's branches while Link followed her lead and the two cornered Ganon just when he was about to escape. They also had to face a bunch of Stelfos who worked for Ganon, but the dynamic duo defeated them in no time and then focused on getting the Triforce of Wisdom back. Link used this opportunity to show off his abilities to Zelda, and he used one of the bombs that were thrown at them by the Stelfos to knock Ganon out and grab the Triforce back. While the issue was resolved, no episode of The Legend of Zelda ends without Link's attempt to woo Zelda, and his constant attempts to get her to kiss him have become a running gag throughout the show. He brings this up while they are trapped in close proximity and refuses to let her go unless she kisses him. However, all his efforts go in vain, as Sprite rushes to the scene and uses magic to separate the two moments before Zelda leans in. While things seem jolly again, the episode ends with a shot of Ganon inside the evil jar as he fumes over his defeat and vows to get revenge. In the next episode, titled Cold Spells, Link plans a romantic getaway with Zelda, but she seems unfazed by his plans and instead asks him to assist her in spring cleaning. While Link desires her approval, he does not seem too happy about the cleaning and lies about being sick to get out of this plan. Zelda sees through Link's excuses, but Sprite convinces her to let him rest while one of Ganon's henchmen spies on them. When Ganon gets wind of Link's sickness, he views use it as the perfect opportunity to summon a lowlander and send it to the castle to steal the Triforce of Wisdom. Moreover, Ganon casts the spell on Sprite so that she will go into a hyperactive state and distract Zelda, and everything goes according to plan as he manages to steal the Triforce amidst the chaos. Of course, Zelda pieces two and two together in no time and rushes after Ganon while Link and Sprite follow her. As Zelda and Link take the lead and find themselves falling in a trap door, Sprite feels guilty about her earlier state and rushes to their rescue just when they face a Goma. Sprite defeats this creature with a powerful bolt of energy, giving Link enough time to escape and face Ganon alone. Meanwhile, Sprite frees Princess Zelda from the trap and the latter jumps into the thick of things and aims an arrow at Ganon. While Ganon tries to deflect the arrow, Arrow, he redirects it towards the underworld ceiling and ends up destroying his lair. As the place crumbles down, Zelda moves in stealth to secure the Triforce of Power, along with the Triforce of Wisdom, but she eventually only manages to get her hands on the latter. This counts as a huge victory, and Zelda seems quite pleased with herself as she returns to the castle with Sprite and Link. The next episode was titled The White Knight, and it begins with Link and Zelda exploring a local village in the Kingdom of Hyrule when strange beings known as tin suits attack them. These creatures had risen from the depths of the underworld and Link and Zelda managed to defeat a bunch of them until one of the tin suits capture Link. However, a mysterious prince appears in the nick of time to rescue the duo. While Link expresses his distaste over the fact that someone else stole his spotlight. Meanwhile, this prince introduced himself as Facade and Zelda took a liking to him, much to Link's disdain. As they returned to the castle, Link went to great lengths to impress Zelda and get her attention back, but only managed to make a fool of himself. After trying enough, Link decided that he was better off on his own, and he left the castle under the assumption that Prince Facade could step up to protect the Triforce of Wisdom in his stead. When Ganon learned about Prince Facade, he decided that this was the perfect time to attack the castle and get his hands on the Triforce, as Facade was known for his extreme vanity. He devised a plan to capture Zelda and throw her in the water, no Knowing that Facade cared too much about his appearance to plunge into the water and ruin his clothes. A distressed Zelda called for help. Facade turned a blind ear, but Link somehow heard her screams and rushed to her rescue. He even fought Ganon's new monster Zola and won over Zelda's heart, while Prince Facade admitted defeat and took his leave. In this way, the show progressed with several episodes where Link and Zelda overcome hurdles together and devise innovative ways to defeat Ganon.
Ganon and keep the Triforce of Wisdom out of his reach. As we approach the final, things get interesting in the second last episode of the show titled The Missing Link. As the title suggests, the episode follows Link after he is captured by Ganon and taken to the underworld. It begins with a fight in Princess Zelda's courtyard, where Ganon arrives with his army of Moblins and Stulfos and a newfound weapon, the Wand of Power. He intends to use the wand to cast a spell on Zelda, but in a surprising twist of events, the spell bounces off her and lands on Link. While Ganon hopes to capture Zelda, he is content with getting his hands on Link, but little does he know that the spell has only captured Link's body, but not his spirit. Zelda then senses Link's spirit and decides to travel to Ganon's lair with Sprite to rescue his body. The two of them find themselves facing Stelfos at the lair's entrance, and Link's spirit comes to their rescue and guides them to victory. However, this entire encounter makes it easy for Ganon's force to figure out that Link Link's spirit is still wandering freely and that Zelda can hear him communicate with her. Soon enough, Zelda successfully manages to reunite Link's body with his spirit, and the overjoyed young man then faces a hurdle as he tries to make his way out of Ganon's evil jar. Finally, Link uses one of the Stelfo's bombs to break free from the evil jar and escape the lair with Zelda, and it takes him no time to bounce back and pester Zelda for yet another kiss. As this season comes to an end, Ganon and Zelda face each other one last time in an episode titled The Moblins Are Revolting. The episode started with a bunch of Moblins and Gurias attacking the North Castle, but this does not even count as a real threat as they end up defeating each other. After failing in their mission to get the Triforce of Wisdom, these ground soldiers return to Ganon, who berates them and shows them his new capture staff. Ganon boasts that the staff has the power to trap everybody within a sealed bubble that can only be broken with the Triforce of Power, and things take an exciting turn when one of the Moblins manages to trap Ganon himself. Not only does the Moblin trap Ganon, but it also sends him down the deepest pits of the underground, known as the Bottomless Pit. After this rebellious act, the Moblin garners enough courage to free all the monsters trapped within the Evil Jar, who unleash chaos the second they break free. While Ganon struggles to return to the surface, these Moblins declare siege to the North Castle, but their feeble attempts at attack Attacking Princess Zelda yield no fruitful outcomes. In fact, Zelda and Link decide that this is the perfect opportunity to head to the underworld and secure the Triforce of Power, and they almost succeed in this mission until they face a Dodongo monster. However, Zelda acted on instinct and defeated the monster by throwing a bomb at it, after which they secured the Triforce of Power. Things seemed to be going quite smoothly for the princess when Ganon somehow travelled all the way to his lair in the bubble and confronted them. He also managed to get in contact with the Triforce of Power, which freed him from captivity and helped him bounce back on his feet. Once again, Zelda had to accept that she would not be able to get the Triforce of Power, and she retreated with Link, who was surprisingly pretty cheerful for someone who had just lost an important artifact to a villain. As the show comes to an end, Link declares that he is still happy that he still has a job, as long as they still need to get the Triforce of Power. While Zelda seems quite annoyed, about the same thing. You traitors will pay for your insolence! The main characters of this show. The show primarily revolves around Zelda and Link's attempts to thwart Ganon's plan and keep the Triforce of Wisdom secured within the North Castle. Oh! Even when you're a ghost, you're disgusting! Well, Princess Zelda. Throughout the history of Hyrule, throughout the history of Hyrule, there have been numerous incarnations of Princess Zelda, and this particular one was the protagonist of the 1989 animated series. Her character was voiced by Cindy Preston, and Zelda was described as a kind and benevolent ruler who cared for her subjects and ensured their safety. Zelda was also said to be wise beyond measure, and her emotional intelligence was off the charts, as everything that she did was to benefit her subject. She was the epitome of compassion and selflessness, often risking her own life to save others. Zelda was bestowed with the powers of the Triforce of Wisdom, but she also strived to get her hands on the Triforce of Power to keep it out of Ganon's hands. Zelda had a wide range of magical abilities and was also known for her expertise in shooting and archery. Zelda often worked alongside Link, who aided her in the adventures and stayed by her side while she battled Ganon. Hold it right there, Zola! It's not worth saving, but I'm doing it anyway! 
Link, voiced by Jonathan Potts, Link was introduced as a young boy known for his courage and bravery in the face of disaster. Zelda entrusted him with the responsibility of guarding the Triforce of Wisdom against Ganon's forces, and he wielded a sword or a shield on most occasions. A running gag in the show suggests that Link harbored profound feelings for Zelda, and he would often ask Zelda for a kiss after helping her out. In most scenarios, Link's romantic endeavors were interrupted by someone's presence, and interestingly, Zelda and Link's relationship was inspired by Maddie and David's character from an 80s show known as Moonlighting. The writers sought inspiration from the main lead's sexual chemistry, but then toned it down to make Link and Zelda's relationship appropriate for a younger audience. You'll be sorrier. Ganon. Introduced as the show's main antagonist, Ganon was the bearer of the Triforce of Power, and he operated from his lair in the pits of the underworld. The character was voiced by Len Carlson, and he controlled an army of moblins, Gorias and Stelfos, among other monsters. Ganon got his name from the word Ganondorf, a term used to describe his monstrous form. While he appeared as a gigantic beast in his monstrous form, Ganon was defined as the Prince of Darkness, and he gained most of his abilities from the Triforce of Power. He was bestowed with this artifact that had the essence of the goddess Din, which made him incredibly strong and gave him unimaginable amounts of mystical powers. While Ganon was a force of nature himself, he often got into conflicts with Princess Zelda to attain the Triforce of Wisdom and rule over the land of Hyrule. Unlocking the magic, the irresistible charm and timeless appeal of The Legend of Zelda. While The Legend of Zelda got some negative reviews back in the day, it has become a comfort watch over the years as audiences have come to love these characters over the past few decades. After The Legend of Zelda attained some popularity in the video games medium, this show served as an entertaining watch that completed the Nintendo game and even contributed to the franchise's overall success. It has become a guilty pleasure to watch, and the characters manage to captivate our attention with their goofy personalities and silly humor. It is also quite refreshing to see Zelda's character be more proactive and not just appear as a damsel in distress. And Link's character deserves recognition for being the perfect partner to the princess. For a low-effort show, The Legend of Zelda had some spectacular animation and wonderful soundtrack, and one can plainly see the amount of effort and love that the creators had poured into this piece of media. All their hard work was quite well received by fans over the years, and this show has created such a solid fan base that we can expect a reboot anytime soon. While nothing has been announced yet, it would not be wrong to keep our fingers crossed, as we hope this fantasy adventure show catches the eye of a production house. Marvelous verdict. To wrap things up, The Legend of Zelda certainly made for an entertaining watch, and while it was only created to promote a recently released video game, the show managed to gather a solid fan base. It was quite unfortunate that the show only lasted for 13 episodes, but at the same time, something is better than nothing. Its one season long run makes it the perfect watch for the next time you wish to binge watch an entire cartoon in one sitting, and we hope you enjoy enjoyed The Legend of Zelda as much as we did. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.